Brad Tennyson here for College of the Mainlands Educational Technology Services Department. I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit today about uh, a new passion project, a new idea of mine, uh, what I'm going to be calling higher education influencers. Kind of think like social media influencers, but um, with you as the star and the expert and, and the content person that is putting new and wonderful information to students' brains uh, through successful online engagement. Um, part of my passion for this comes from the fact that I do have a radio TV background, uh, and, and I strongly feel that some of those ideas of engagement with an audience apply in the classroom. Uh, and so to cover some of the basics of these thoughts, uh, we're going to get into the idea of staying connected with your students digitally, uh, a little bit on the topic of dressing for success. Uh, let's talk about uh, creating a script. Uh, how, how do you go about that? What makes that easy? How do you time it out? Uh, and then once you have a script and you've got a video recorded, ready to go, what do you do with it? So uh, we'll talk about uh, getting started with video. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining. All right, so what do I mean by staying connected? Uh, well, primarily it's about checking your email, staying in your course's messages, knowing the difference between course emails and course messages and desire to learn or whatever your learning management system may be. Uh, and really just staying in communication with those students. Because if you can imagine if a normal class, a face-to-face -face class, if a student has their hand up with a question and you let them sit there for five minutes, they're gonna feel very ignored. We'll turn that into an email. If you take longer than 24 hours to respond to an email, then something's wrong and that student is gonna feel that way. Uh, so make sure you're checking your email on a daily basis, if not multiple times a day. Um, when it comes to the learning management system, and so here at College of the Mainland for Desire to Learn in the fall, um, there are two things to watch for. There are course emails and there are course messages. All right, and they are two very different things. They, they interact with the system differently and they communicate to the student differently. Uh, one stays entirely in the LMS and uh, well, the other one works through a combination of the LMS and our Outlook email system. Uh, and so basically for me, and I'm not saying this works for everybody, but when it comes to staying connected, I treat emails a lot like a text message, uh, except emails can be flagged for importance and saved for the next day. Um, and so you've got to find a way that works for you to stay on top of your email, to stay connected with your students. Okay, so what about dressing for success? Well, uh, it just means looking good on camera, right? I, I, it's a wonderful time right now because the younger generations have basically made it. You can wear whatever makes you happy as long as it looks good and clean. Uh, I'm not saying that everybody can pull off the new 80s mom jeans plus a mullet look, but they exist. So just make sure you look sharp on camera and that your environment behind you looks good as well. And don't be afraid to use where you're filming as a way to give some expression of your personality uh, to your students. You want to connect with them in a human way and what better thing to do than show them some of your interests and likes. And then uh, above all else, be confident. Uh, you want to make sure that you are confident in what you're saying. You want to make sure that you are confident in the content that you are covering. Um, and, and also at the same time, you, you want to be showing respect. So you don't want to be coming across as anything that uh, might be taken as arrogant because you are dealing with one way communication. Uh, and so you keep that in mind that different people will review things differently and keep a more uh, mellow tone when you can. And when it comes to Generation Z, they really do care about you interacting with them. Um, and, and really and truly, it's just staying connected. I can't say that enough. Okay, so what about creating a script? What do you do then? Um, you don't want anything too long. I know you probably have an amazing 50-page dissertation that would turn into a wonderful YouTube two-hour video essay, um, but that's not going to work for the modern generation. And really and truly, everybody is starting to adapt to the smaller chunks of content in three to eight-minute bites, right? And so I like to call that chunking. Um, one big exception to that is that the YouTube channels do have now chaptering, uh, and so you can do a longer video and, and break it down into these chunked segments of content for your students to digest, right? Um, uh, so do keep that in mind when you're doing these short, digestible, YouTube generation style content, right? Uh, and then how do you make a script? Uh, this is actually one of my favorites to share when we're talking about scripting because timing is important, right? Well, well how do you know how long your script is? Uh, the easiest thing I can suggest is get your script typed up and then use Microsoft Word's font settings to change it into all caps. Because what you have is Times New Roman, 12 point font, all caps, 
is going to be six lines of text for about 30 seconds of footage. All right, so that works out fairly well for most people. There are some variances on speaking speeds, um, but yeah, that's a really good rule to follow. 12 point font, all caps, Times New Roman, uh, six lines of text is about 30 seconds of, of script. All right, so you've got a script ready. What's next? Well, you're gonna have to get started with working with video. Uh, a lot of ways to go about it, a lot of software out there, uh, a lot of styles to do. You don't have to just do a vlog style. You can do a Microsoft Teams meeting recording. Um, you can do a screen recording using Microsoft Stream through your College of the Mainland accounts, right? Uh, YouTube even offers up uh, live streaming that can be recorded and shared later. Uh, and then if you want to get a little more fancy, if you want to get into video editing, you've got open source software like OpenShot. Um, big fan of multi-camera work using a software called OBS. It's uh, basically like a little TV studio on your computer. Uh, and then as a College of the Mainland full-time faculty, uh, we do have access to Adobe Rush. I'm a big fan of this one. It used to be a mobile-only platform, uh, but they have added it with desktop operation. And it is geared at taking basic concepts from their fancier video editing platforms uh, and simplifying it for you uh, so that you can add camera and graphics and transitions and sound effects and music beds easily. And that's what's really nice about that one. Uh, but when it comes down to it, first and foremost, when you are making a video, uh, rule number one is if your audio is bad, your video is bad. Uh, if they cannot understand you, then there's going to be a problem. So always make sure that your audio is recording well. And that is the basics of getting started with video. All right. Well, again, Brad Dennison here for College of the Mainland's Educational Technology Services Department. Uh, I want to tell you, don't be afraid of technology. And remember, while the uh, Generation Z kids are a little weird, with a little bit of help from all of us, they're going to be all right.